A common complaint about Create Studio is that a moderate length video can take a very long time to render. The render time is significantly impacted by the computer's processing power, graphics card, and available memory. I will compare results of the same project rendered on a workstation with a graphics card to a lower powered laptop. I will also explore a common complaint where renders freeze at some percentage and never complete. Keep watching and I will investigate solutions for long render times. This is Randy and Patrick with more Create Studio 3 tips. A common response to rendering issues in the Create Studio Facebook groups is to publish your project into smaller segments and then stitch all the segments together into your final video. To determine how well this works, I have rendered the same video using two methods. One method where the entire video was published in one project and the other method was to break it into small scenes that were stitched together afterwards. Before I compare the results, let's understand the video project being compared. It is a short story about some neighborhood kids competing for a chance to go to Paris for the 2024 Olympics. The kids compete in multiple events such as soccer, racing, diving, long jump, and gymnastics, and the total duration of the story lasts four minutes. So when I started this story, I had determined that there would be scenes for each sporting event as well as a TV commentator for the opening and closing and a commercial in the middle, thereby making it look like the neighborhood Olympics were being broadcast on television. The entire project existed in a folder called Kid Olympics with subfolders for opening, soccer, spelling, and all the other scenes, and it looks like this. So you can see the entire project was designed with individual scenes in mind and then stitching them together at the end to create the final video. Okay, let's start looking at the numbers. Oh, watch out! Geek alert! Randy is going to talk math now. I bet he even used a spreadsheet. Well, thanks for the interruption, Patrick. You're welcome. It is true that I used a spreadsheet and- Told you! Randy is a geek! And here are the render results in seconds. When Adding all the scene render times together, the total render time is six minutes. Now let's compare that to a project that had all the scenes stitched together. I will give you a drum roll! The render time was five minutes, 45 seconds. Wait, are you telling me the all scenes project is shorter than the sum of the individual projects? Why would you even bother rendering the project in small scenes? Having individual scene projects is still better because I often tweak each scene many times and rendering the full project just to check out how the adjustment looks does not make sense. Okay, fair enough. You mentioned earlier that you did the same renders on a lower power computer. What do those render times look like? Sure. I will put the laptop results in a column by the workstation results. Randy, some of your eights are being lazy and are laying on their sides. Those aren't eights. That is the affinity symbol. Those project renders would get to 100% but never complete, even after several hours. For whatever reason, some projects would hang and never complete. Hey Randy, what is infinity plus infinity? Well, that is also infinity. Nope, to infinity and beyond. Oh, clever reference to Buzz Lightyear. Renders that do not complete is another common complaint and one recommendation often shared in the Facebook group is to turn off hardware acceleration. So far, I have been rendering all projects with the default values that you see here. To disable hardware acceleration, click on the toggle switch. So I did that for the track scene and it worked. Be warned, it does take much longer, but hey, a slow render is better than a no render. Another method that worked for this project was to render at a low quality. Rendering at a low quality was much faster and generated a smaller file, but how does it look compared to the standard quality? When I compare the two side by side, I really can't tell a difference, even when scaled up at 200%. At 300% enlargement, I am starting to see a difference in quality. I don't see much difference between the two, and I have the eyesight of a bat! Patrick, bats don't have good eyesight. Sure they do. How else can they fly around in the dark? While Patrick and I may disagree on the eyesight of bats, we both agree that you may want to consider a low quality render if your renders take a long time to complete. My low quality render took half as long as the standard quality. 
So at this point I thought I would be able to breeze through the other scenes that did not complete, but it turned out that those scenes would not render even with hardware acceleration turned off, quality set to low, or using the old rendering engine. I had this problem in the past and the way I got around it was to find which track caused the hang by hiding a track to see if the publish would complete. Once I found the offending track I would make slight changes to the track and for some mysterious reason the render would not just hang but would then complete. If you recall I had each scene in its own group. These all rendered on the workstation but some would hang on the laptop. I ungrouped the scene to look for which track may be causing the hang, and it turned out the fact of ungrouping the scene allowed it to finish the render. I am not sure why a group caused the hang problem on my laptop, but ungrouping did allow it to render, and now I can show all the render results of the laptop. Some scenes took twice as long to render on the laptop, while other scenes took six times longer. The sum of the scenes was 19 and a half minutes. So how long did the laptop render the all scenes project? That took 21 minutes and 45 seconds. That is a little longer than the sum of the individual projects, but not much more. Then after rendering the videos for each individual scene, you need to stitch the scenes together and make the final video. On the laptop, stitching the scenes together took 2 minutes 5 seconds, while on the workstation it took 1 minute 4 seconds. Okay, let me summarize. Render times are mostly dependent on the computer doing the rendering, so everyone should buy a supercomputer. No. Well, I mean yes, the computer resources has a big impact to render times, but no, the viewer should not go out and buy an expensive computer. Another sure way to speed up renders is to select the low quality setting. This is true, and I admit, I was surprised that I could not really tell the difference when viewing videos rendered in standard quality or low quality. Breaking a video into multiple scenes does not improve total rendering time at all. That is true. However, breaking a longer video into scenes is a good idea. It can help the flow of the development process, plus it is much easier and efficient to make adjustments to your video as you think of improvements. Viewers can encounter renders that will never complete. That is by far the most aggravating problem when rendering. When the render freezes and never finishes, the best thing to do is to make small changes to see if that breaks the hang. For a project that has multiple tracks, I will hide tracks until I discover the one that contributes to the hang and then start changing that track or eliminate it altogether if it doesn't impact the story. Well, that is all for today. Randy and I wish you all the best as you render your Create Studio projects.